Okay, welcome everyone, James Parker. Um, I'm just pulled up a guy named Troy Matterson. He's a PGA Tour player. Uh, got a great golf swing, got a great move. Works closely with Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer. Um, and in particular, moves his lower bit in a very, very um, nice fashion. So I just wanted to make a quick video uh, just to show you uh, what it's all about. So. Uh, let's start with a couple of lines here. All right, one just inside his left heel, one just outside. Uh, sorry, one just inside his right heel, and one just outside his left heel. And um, we do the same from this sort of camera angle as well. And you know, we 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 look we look too much, I think, as as golf teachers and uh, and people trying to explain the golf swing to people. We look too much from this kind of face on camera angle and the down the line camera angle where you know if we if we just learned a lot you know pulled up some different camera angles just to explain things I think people will learn uh, will, will pick it up a little bit easier and, and hopefully you know when you watch this from from his rear view um, you know I think a, a light bulb will go off for you a little bit um, so I've got a video on YouTube um, on uh, how the hips turn, you know, so what I did was I got a head cover and uh, I just put it in the middle of my trousers there and the, at the bottom of my back. And what I said was basically try and get the head cover, get, get, a, get a line on the ground here and try and get your head cover um, moving to the left of the line, right? So um, if you watch how Troy Matteson uh, moves his backswing. So, so let's talk about setup first. Um, you know, he's obviously got a little bit more weight on his front leg here, right? So, um, as he goes up to the top, you know, I've spoken for a good few years now about just how we want to move the lower body. The, the, the right leg straightens a little bit as the left leg bends a little bit. All right, now. Yes, we want our attention in this front leg. We want to try and treat it as an anchor, all right, using this counterbalancing move. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the counterbalancing move, well, as the as the club and your hands and your arms are moving to the right, well, this momentum, this force is going to try and pull you off to the right. Your head's going to want to move. Your your hips are going to want to sway. Um, off to the right with it. So if you just plant a little bit more weight in your forward leg, um, just to start, just a little bit, 55% instead of 50-50. And then as the club starts moving back and you know, you're building up some momentum with your hands and arms and club getting up to the top, just try and increase the pressure under your front foot just a little bit to get up to the top, right? And this is called counterbalancing. It's basically to help keep you centered. All right. Um, so that that's that's the backswing from that angle. All right. So you can see how um, you can see how he straightens his right leg. Right. And as he does that, his right hip moves back behind him this way. His right pocket's going to be moving back behind him this way. Um, as he's feeling as though he's putting a bit more pressure into his front leg. Now, in reality, right, with all this kind of technology that we've got out there now with regards to force plates and balance um, pads and things like that, which measure the amount of pressure underneath each foot, well, you know, we've got to understand the difference between what we feel and what is real. We want to feel as though there's a little bit more pressure in this leg, but because this leg's straightening, which means you're going to be pushing down into the ground with this right leg. Now, chances are by the time you get up to the top here, there's still probably going to be more weight, more pressure under your under your right foot. Okay, so that's important to understand. The big difference in the golf swing between what we feel and what is actually real. All right, now, um, Let's start looking at this. So, so first of all, you know, I, I still, you know, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube and just to see what everyone else is talking about. And there's still, 
there's still people out there talking about a level hip turn, you know. Now, once you start using terminology like this, I mean, you just go in the opposite way. I mean, you can clearly see at the top here, I mean, his right hip is so much higher than his left hip. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, I mean, the idea of turning level is just, it's just bad information, all right? Don't listen to it, run in the other direction. Um, but with regards to um, getting this little, oops, getting this little thing where you're getting a head cover or something like that in the bottom of your trousers here, just so it's sticking out there, just tuck it in, right? There's a line on the ground. Now, as we're moving and we're turning, just look how much that your tailbone, it's called the tailbone drill, right? Just, how much, just look how much your tailbone is moving to the left, moving towards the target. Right, now this is important. I mean, that's a great hip turn. I mean, that's, that's impressive, you know? But to do that, you have to understand that this leg straightens a little bit. It doesn't lock, you know, I don't want you to lock your back leg. Um, but I do want your right knee to straighten, right? And I do want your left knee to flex, right? So there's a straightening with the back leg, there's a flexing with the front leg. Now, even if you struggle with flexibility, this movement is going to help you. You know, there's no question about that. You can see his right leg straightened, his left leg has flexed, and. Uh, as he's done that, obviously his tailbone, if you watch where his tailbone is, his tailbone is moving to the left. All right. As he's also doing that, the space here, let me just change colour, the space here between his right pocket and that vertical line is going to increase. All right. And then there's the pushing down sensation to start the downswing. There's pushing down into the ground. And then as you push down into the ground, the ground, using the ground as a trampoline, it's going to push you back up, which thrusts your hips forward and up. And, you know, a lot of powerful players, you look at Bubba Watson, you look at a lot of the powerful guys, really using the ground, really pushing up off the ground. You see a lot of them with both heels kind of off the ground at impact, right? And this is just this is just really pushing up off the ground, right? To get some more speed. The better you can control your body, the better you can control how your hips work, the more you're going to be able to get this whip cracking effect with your hands and arms. Now it's your hands and arms which control the club, all right? So if you can get that whip cracking action by controlling your body that's going to help produce more power through the shot. Right, so quick little drill for you. Very, very interesting looking at golf pros from different angles. Just think of the tailbone, what the tailbone should be doing. We want it moving towards the target on the backswing. And then there's a pushing down sensation. Has to, you have to push down even more to push back up whilst your hips move forward. And by forward, obviously, I mean towards the target and upwards. All right. So there, you look at you look at the hip, you look at the belt line, you look at the belt line here, and then you look at the belt line there. I mean, there's a there's an extension in the body, isn't there? Through the shot, there's an extension. Right, the body is extended more. Right, guys. Uh, I hope that clears a few things up for you. Great, you know, great example of exactly. Uh, notice as well this one on the on the left side. You know, he's, he's using a driver. It might be a three wood club head. You know, the club head looks a little small for a driver, but you know, even with even with the three wood, he's, he's definitely noticeably got a little bit more weight on his forward leg as well. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, great example of what we want to want to try and do, how we want to work the lower body, how it produces power and speed, how we can get more speed with this whip cracking action with our arms. Um, 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Cheers.